Welcome back everyone. In this video, I want to talk about this visualization that I have created and hopefully you will understand why we use sine and cosine functions when we create positional embeddings. So the name of this is custom color positional encodings and the reason I came up with custom color is because I decided to give a unique color to each positional encoding. Okay. As you can see on the right side, we have dimension zero depicted with the blue line. We have, dimen we have dimension one with this orange line that's here. And then for dimension two, we have the green line. And for dimension three, we have this purple line up at the top. Okay. So these are the four positional encodings. On the x-axis, you see the position and on the y-axis, you see the encoding value. And I'm assuming this is very confusing to you right now. So I will do my best to uh, tell you guys what's going on. So let's come back over here. And for the word am, we see that it's in index position one. Okay, so if we come back over here and let's come to position one. So as you can see, this is position one and position one has four values. The blue line represents dimension zero, you know, it's zero based, but that's the first dimension. And the value for it is 0.84. Now, if we come back over here, the value for this sine function is 0.84. Okay, now let's continue. Dimension two is a cosine function, which is over here. And that's 0.54. Now, if we come back, you saw, this is the cosine dimension one, it's 0.54. We come back over here, the cosine value is indeed 0.54. Now let's continue. If we go down, we see 0 0.09, which is going to be rounded up to 0.1. And that's the another sine wave for dimension two. And if we come back over here, we see the value is 0 0.1. On our graph, it was 0 0.099. So it matches. Now, if we go to the next value, which is not the white line, that's the x-axis, but the last dimension, which is the purple, you see up here, the value for it is 0.995. So that's rounded up to 1.0. 1.0 as you see over here. So I hope you understand that these are the positional encodings for the words. So the position zero, all these values, belong to I. Position one over here, all these four values, one, two, three, four, represent the word am. Position two represent the word a for I am a robot. Okay, so these one, two, three, four values represent the word a. And now position three represents a robot. So one, two, three, four. As you can see, we have four positional encodings, each one belonging to a uh, embedding. So if, if we come back over here, you see that AM has these four positional encodings. And what I've did is I plotted the entire thing. So if, for example, you want to look at the example for robot, robot is the last word. So it's in position three, right? Because position zero is I, position one is am position two is a and position three is robot okay so let's start for robot we see that the first dimension is you know it's the zeroth index because this column is the zeroth index this is the first index second index third index for the last column and for the zeroth index remember we use the sine function so this is going to be the first dimension and it uses the sine encoding okay and the first dimension belongs to the blue line. So now if we come over here, we get the value for the blue line to be 0 0.14. And that corresponds to 0 0.14. Now, let's look at the second uh, dimension, which is the cosine dimension one, okay? And the value is negative 0 0.9899. We come back over here, we see that it's negative 0 0.99. And we do the rest for 0 0.3 and 0 0.96 and oops, sorry. And we get that here we have um, 0.3 and 0.96. So these are the positional encodings. And you're probably thinking, Patrick, 
I thought these were sine and cosine waves. These sure as hell don't look like sine and cosine waves. These look like linear lines. And this is the beauty that I wanted to show you. So this is Plotly and you can zoom out. And if you zoom out, boom. See the beauty of this? Or maybe I just love math and, and I love the beauty of it, but this is the sine and cosine wave. And what we did is we just zoomed in. So as you can see here, we have positions up from zero to 100, but we only zoomed in to this area. So if I come over here and I zoom in on this area and then I, I go to pan and I scroll it over like this, you see that this was position. Now I'm going to switch back to zoom. This was position zero, position one, position two, position three. Okay, so this was I am a robot. So you see that these four dimensions are what tells us what the positional encodings are. And if you zoom out, you see that they actually belong to sine and cosine waves. So you see, we have the first dimension for the blue is coming up here, down here, up here, down here, up here, down here. And obviously this is uh, repeating itself. Then we can go to the cosine dimension one, which is the orange line. And we see that it goes down, up, down, up, and so on. Then we can look at the sine wave for dimension two. It's this green one and it's repeating itself. And we can do it for the last dimension, which is dimension three for cosine. And you see that it's over here like this. So it's repeating itself. So that's what I was trying to talk about. These sine and cosine values repeat after a while. So regardless of how long the input is, you know, the model is going to not be troubled because, for example, if the input is a thousand words long, it has already seen the entire sine and cosine waves. It's repeating after only about, you know, here, a hundred uh, positions. And, you know, that varies as to how often the uh, sine and cosine wave repeat itself. Over here, for us, it's repeating after about, you know, a hundred uh, positions. But you can play around with this for your model, okay? But that's the beauty of it. Whenever you have a very long input, the model is not going to be confused because it has already seen what the sine and cosine wave is, okay? It's just looking at repeated sine and cosine waves and it's gonna be like, okay, I've already seen this. Just because it's repeating doesn't mean it's anything new and it's not gonna baffle or confuse me, okay? So this is uh, Plotly. Um, I mean, I use Plotly. If you don't know what Plotly is, it's a very amazing, uh, graphing tool and it provides an HTML page and you can zoom in on things, you can zoom out of things. So that's what I did when I tricked you guys in the beginning. I just zoomed in on this part and and then I panned it. I scrolled it over like this and I told you guys that, you know, these are the positional encodings. And from this position, they do not look like they are part of any smooth sine or cosine graph, okay? You see on the x-axis, we have positions from 0 to 4.5. And that's why we don't see the clear picture. But once we zoom out from, if you look at the x-axis, from position 0 to position 90, you start seeing the repeating patterns. So that's why we use sine and cosine values. Okay, so now I'm going to come back over here. And in the next section, we're going to start doing the math, as you can see over here. So... I really hope that this visualization helped you understand why we use sine and cosine waves and why they are helpful. So in the, ne in the next lesson, we're going to start doing the math, you know, as to calculating why and how we got these numbers over here. So I will see you in the next lesson.